founding member of Generation X, a soccer, basketball, taekwondo mom, a coffee and chocolate-aholic, and new to the creative, creative writing life. I would say she's not that new. <laughs> she's currently working on a novel and a collection of linked short stories. And thank you, Elaine. Thank you um, for hosting this uh, event today and uh, having the opportunity to share uh, some of my short stories with you. I'm going to share two short stories uh, from a collection I started uh, this summer at a writer's retreat at Sarah Lawrence College. Um, the first is the first story in a series of four, and then I'll also read the epilogue to that series. I hope you enjoy them. Guide on one. I eat the rain, I eat the rain, Oscar proclaimed as he ran from the carport into the driveway. Head back, mouth open, his eyes were bright with the wisdom of Lindsay. His four-year-old legs were a tiny blur as he zigzagged across the asphalt onto the dormant winter grass of our small front yard. The staccato drip-drop of swollen raindrops kept time with his exaggerated gulping noises. Instead of stomping on the puddles gathering on the uneven surface of the drive, Oscar ignored, uh, ignored them, intent on gleefully gobbling up as many droplets as he could before they hit the ground. The rain and Oscar's antics on this rare, warm, mid-March day in the North Country were welcome relief after the harsh and lonely winter. I wanted to get him into the house before he got soaked to the skin. I had a trunk full of groceries from the TX to unpack and dinner to get ready before the FRG meeting at 1900 in Anna Wilson's adjacent unit. Being a single parent, while your spouse was deployed, was not easy. There was no one to share chores with or to cover for you, so you could go to one of the frequent community building mandatory fund army functions. There was always some task to be done, some responsibility to be met. But as I watched Oscar's joyful game, I decided to join him. So what if I got wet or if the groceries sat for a bit? Or if I was a little late to the meeting? I wanted to spend time with my son. The ladies would understand. They were very accepting of my differences. Frankly, I kind of enjoyed being their special project. I simply wasn't your typical army spouse. Leaving the safety of the carport, I hesitated as the first drops fell on my head. But as I stood still and accepted the fact that I was going to get wet no matter what, I felt my responsibilities wash away. I ran to join Oscar in the front yard. He was spinning in circles and dancing and repeating his I eat the rain in a sing-song fashion, hauntingly reminiscent of being around the rosy. I took hold of his hands and we danced together. We laughed and gulped down raindrops as fast as they fell into our eager mouths. It was extraordinary to be so silly. The months of worry and waiting were no longer weighing on me. I was lighter, joyful. I started to spin in place, my arms outstretched, my mouth opening my face to the sky. The rain came down harder, but I didn't care. I spun round and round until I was dizzy. I could hear Oscar nearby. I opened my eyes to find him, intending to gauge the distance between us and envelop him in a huge bear hug. When a movement on the front porch caught my eye, I could see the dark shapes of two people standing in the shadows out of the wet, silently waiting, watching Oscar and I sway to the rhythm of our giddy weedy dance. I couldn't make out their faces, but one of them saw me looking their way. He stepped out of the shadows and onto the front step. The soft gray light of the cloudy late afternoon <coughs> sky illuminated the brass buttons and insignias on his dark green Class A uniform. The other man stepped forward to join the first. Two men in Class A's stood between Oscar and I and our front door. I recognized them from the social after the post wide yard sale. The chaplain and the casualty notification officer. The world and I stopped cold. I closed my eyes, dropped to my knees, and raised my head back up to the sky. I knew that Oscar had also stopped dancing. I felt him shift closer to me. He came up behind me, hands resting slightly on my shoulder for support. He whispered in my ear, You have to eat the rain if you're not. Don't let him fall in your eyes and drown you, Daddy. Hmm. Epilogue. He'd been confused when I asked him to take the form to complete the 
Family History Essay. New patients are like that. They never expect that I want them to write about their life, but it helps during therapy. <clears throat> the words they choose when they write their stories tell me more about them and their oral narratives. They edit themselves when they try to pick up my body language cues, when they sit in my office and tell me their life stories. In the first session, I get the basics, why they're coming to see me, what they hope to accomplish, and I end with giving them forms and the assignment. He had asked, my family history, you want me to write it out? Yes, I responded. Take a few pages to talk about your life, your immediate family, your parents, any siblings you may have. Talk about your extended family and friends, too. You may also wish to add any significant romantic relationships. He didn't keep his second appointment. <laughs> I had tried to contact him, but it really was his call as to whether or not he wanted to engage in therapy. Thoughts of him faded into the realities of my busy life and the rush of other patients. That was until I opened the mail earlier today. There was a letter from an APO box, no name on the outside but my own. I opened the envelope, taking out three folded, unlined sheets of paper. It looked like they had each been crumpled, thrown away even, and then carefully picked out of the garbage and pressed smoothly. I unfolded the pages and read what at first appeared to be, to be a beautifully handwritten list. My family history. 1998, my parents married Pine Bluff, Arkansas. They were happy. 1999, my father lost his job at the auto plant. My mother joined the army. They moved to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. They wanted to start a family. 2000, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, I was born. My parents were happy. I was new. 2001, we went to war. My parents were scared. I learned to walk. 2002, we moved to Fort Drum, New York. My mother prepared. My father didn't fit in. I learned to talk. 2003, my, father, my mother deployed. My father and I were lonely. I learned to listen and wait. 2004, my mother was KIA. We were alone. My father was numb. I learned to cry. 2005, we moved off post. My father joined the National Guard. I learned to stay small. 2006, we moved to Chicago. My father tried his best. I learned the, new, the rules of the new school. 2007, my father kept trying to do his best. I learned to enjoy the cold of winter. 2008, my father deployed. My grandmother moved in with me. I was lonely. 2009, my father came home. My grandmother went home. I was happy. 2010, my father wasn't right. I learned to be scared. 2011, my father deployed again. My grandmother came back. I learned that middle school sucks. 2012, my father was KIA. My grandmother took me home to Pine Bluff, Arkansas. I learned to stop crying. 2013 to 2017, my parents were gone. My grandmother tried her best. My grandmother was getting old. I learned about girls. I learned to get into trouble. 2018, my parents were gone. My grandmother died. I turned 18. I joined the army. 2019, my parents were gone. My grandmother was dead. I was in the army. I learned I was about to deploy. I came to see you. 2020, my parents are gone. My grandmother is dead. You asked me to write an essay last year. I wrote this. And you have it in your hand. I walk out of my tent to find an enemy combatant and let my body eat the rain of his bullets. PFC, Oscar Michael Patron, KIA, 15 March, 2020.